Hello and welcome to this Astranti Financial Training YouTube video on activity-based management. This is one of several videos that we've been releasing. I'm going to be releasing plenty more over the coming months. These may be based on particular topics. They might be based on the case study, objective tests, exam technique, etc. All those sorts of things. So if you are interested in seeing more of these videos, then please do like and subscribe at the bottom of your screen. And also visit the website www.astranti.com for more information about the kinds of products that we produce here and some free samples and lots of information in general about the SEMA exam. And as I mentioned, this video is going to be on activity-based management, just a very brief introduction into what it is. And it's primarily aimed at management and above students because this is where activity-based management truly comes in at the operational certificate level you're probably focusing more on activity-based costing but this goes a step further than that in that it uses the kind of information that you generate using activity-based methods to make decisions to drive performance rather than just using it for costing purposes and we're going to use an example for this based on a shop owner called Lou who owns a wool shop and it's the best wool shop in the town and customers come from all over to visit her. She's open 365 days a year. That's how committed she is. And she has a shop assistant, Peter, that works in the shop several days a week. And she's comparing some of her customers to see just how profitable her customers are. And her main customers are Doris and Derek. Now, Doris and Derek, they both purchase £4,000 worth of wool every single year. And the cost to Lou of bringing in this wool is £1,000. So, under a traditional costing system, that's quite simple. The revenue generated from Doris is £4,000. The cost to Lou of buying that wool to then sell to Doris is £1,000. So, profit is £3,000. Nice and simple. The same for Derek. You know, he buys £4,000. This costs Lou £1,000. So again, £3,000 profit generated by Derek. All nice and simple, easy to understand, and they're both equally profitable, right? No problems there. But what if the customers treat Lou very differently? What if the way in which they shop is very different? For example, Doris, she buys in bulk. She purchased £4,000 worth at the very start of the year. Whereas Derek comes into the shop every single day. He buys one ball of yarn every single day. He comes in and then talks to people and then has to go through the processing and receipts and on the till, etc. every single day. Whereas Doris is never heard from again. She never turns up until this time next year. But Derek's always distracting Lou and distracting Peter because he likes to have a conversation every time he's in. He always asks about the different types of wool. I mean, he always buys the same wool every time. I don't know why he asks about it, but he does. And also this stifles operations because Peter's working on the till and he's trying to you know, process Derek's order and get him out the door, but then Derek's talking to him. So he's not doing other things. He's not dealing with other customers. There's also an opportunity cost here because Lou also runs a internet business and Peter is supposed to be packing boxes for online deliveries. But when Derek is talking to him, he can't do that. So there's an opportunity cost to the business. And as a result of this, Lou conducts analysis of the daily cost of these customers. And Doris, of course, she buys in bulk once a year, never heard of him again. Her daily cost is zero. But Derek actually costs the organization £15 a day just from coming in and causing disruptions. So what difference does this make on their profitability when we factor that in, when we use an activity-based method? Well, of course, the revenue and the cost stays the same. But Doris has an additional cost of £0 because she doesn't do anything other than buy the products. Whereas Derek, again, has the same revenue with direct cost, but of course he costs the business 15 pounds a day. He comes in every day and the shop's open 365 days a year. 
which means he actually costs the business an extra £5,475 a year. And so whilst the profitability for Doris is still the same, it's still £3,000, Derek actually causes a loss of £2,475 a year to the business. So this is how you can use this sort of information, use the activities. So they're not just cost products and cost customers, etc., but to use it to actually understand where your costs are being incurred and how you can make decisions that would better overcome these. So, for example, we know that Doris is a more profitable customer. That much is clear. But should we just get rid of Derek? Should we just tell Derek, you know, Derek, you can't come here anymore. We don't want you in here. But what Lou should be doing, she doesn't want to do that because A, she's very nice, but also because you, know, you don't want to be turning customers away. Customers are the lifeblood of any organization. But what she could do is encourage more Doris style behavior and discourage the Derek style behavior. So it could be that she imposes a minimum order quantity. So people aren't just coming in and buying every single day. Perhaps she could also limit the amount of time that she spends helping people out. Or perhaps she could produce some sort of instructional pamphlet to give to people so that they're not coming in and asking her every day. She just has to take the time to produce it once and then she can just hand it out. But traditional costing did not help us here. Under a traditional costing method, we would have just thought that Doris generates 3,000 in profit, and so does Derek. They're equally profitable. Job done. Don't worry about it. But actually, when we used the activity-based system for appraising these two customers, we found that there was actually a stark difference. Almost all the profit she generates from Doris is being eaten up by the additional costs for Derek. And that's ultimately what activity-based management is. It uses activity-based costing to move beyond mere cost analysis to actually use it as a strategic tool to analyze the organization to make decisions. This could be on employees. Perhaps there's certain employees that are having their time eaten up by Derek-like customers, and that's causing the, the value of that employee to the organization to, in a sense, decrease because they're not generating more revenue for the company. The equipment that's used at the organization, the facilities, are you using the most efficient facilities? Are there additional costs involved? If you have a, a warehouse that's really wet and damp, and as a result, you have a higher degree of wastage of the products that you have stored there, is it more efficient to then move to a warehouse that is drier and therefore the maintenance cost? will go down, but the traditional costing just looks at the additional cost of the facility and it doesn't look at the extra benefits you would get from moving the distribution as well. Now, perhaps if Lou was sending out online orders, if Derek was suddenly going to start buying online, but he was buying one ball of yarn every day for next day delivery, that would be a huge cost on the organization in terms of delivery time. Whereas if there was a minimum order, let's say that he could only buy at least 30 balls of yarn, then that would perhaps reduce the amount of deliveries she would have to make. And also overheads of the organization as well, going back to equipment and facilities. And are there certain things that you're paying too much for, but traditional costing is not demonstrating to you that that is the case because it's not taking into account the activities that drive the costs. And of course, it wouldn't be activity-based costing and activity-based management without mentioning overheads. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have found it useful. I hope you have, have a good idea of what activity-based management is, or at least a very basic brief understanding as to what it is. And it's essentially a tool to take all that information, all that data that you had generated using activity-based costing and turning it into something tangible that you can actually make decisions that benefit the organizations. And as I said, if you like these videos, then please do like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen. We'll be producing many more. Also visit the website www.astranti.com for many more free samples of the various different products that we produce. So goodbye for now.